assalamu alaikum uh, dear students today our topic is short and long composition and so whenever we are talking about composition composition may be any piece of writing whatever we have composed or even if we have written something to speak on but here in today's topic we will confine ourselves to only few compositions if we generally talk about the compositions whether we are writing a short report long report any kind of flyer brochure any kind of technical writing business writing non technical writing each and everything that becomes in composition that is always the part of composition but here we are specifically talking about two kind of compositions one we are considering here as far as, as far as our course content is concerned according to that one we will take the paragraph writing as a short composition because every big big and longer composition contains short paragraphs so we can say the minimum unit of short composition is a paragraph and in the longer composition here we are not concerned about the letter writings or report writings or other writings this is basically the basic functional english course so that's why we will be concerned about essay writing so if we moderately talk about the long and short composition so in short composition we would like to talk about the writing that consists from 50 to 80 or 100 words that is like a paragraph and the longer report that is 100 or more than 100 or 150 words plus writing and when it is composition men mean when this is in one unity this is leading towards one idea so first we would like to talk about the short composition which is paragraph writing which may be less than 50 words or usually we call 50 words or more than 50 or less than 100 words so if we talk about the short composition for our second language learners it seems quite easier to them that they are just going to write Five to ten lines, or half of the page, or one of one page. So when they are writing English, they consider it quite easier. But in reality, it is a very uh, taxing task. Uh, task. It's a very difficult one if we want to write a standard paragraph. So a standard paragraph. What do we need? actually a very good vocabulary is required set of vocabulary should be very good if we need a very good composition chart composition but overall at this level the standard of expectation is not so high whether the standard of expectation is not so high but we need to meet the highly set standards so why it is a bit difficult if we are going to write it we should not just focus on the lines or on the words because we have to make a very good topical sentence which is we can say uh the soul of the paragraph then there should be a logical sequence a very good grammatical range with a good and precise vocabulary then there must be unity and we need to avoid monotony in paragraph because what what is monotony mean if we are describing something in descriptive writing we are writing uh, this is this is this is this is dash 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 this is so this kind of sentence is showing that if we have not a good range and we are using the similar pattern again and again so we need to avoid this monotony so uh, 
achieving all these things are very important for a standard paragraph so let's see practically how we can write a paragraph what should be the contents so basically it revolves around three things first whatever the topic is we do generally start from that topic we define it or write something about it but we write in such a way that we are leading towards our specific idea you are the writer definitely you have one intention or you have one point of view so basically whenever you are writing a paragraph on any topic you are actually trying to convey your own point of view and your own that point of view is called main idea or if you read any of the paragraphs you can find out easily that what is the really specific point that the writer is trying to make so that is called the main idea and then the third thing is evidence or facts that endorse your opinion or that endorse the opinion of the writer or the author so now these three are basically the pivotal points so first you start from general and then you move towards specific and from that specific you give your evidences now this order of these three main points of your paragraph may vary but the sequence may be in reverse order it depends upon the writing style of a writer but uh, all the content basically revolves around this specific idea or intended point of view of the author okay so even when you are reading a paragraph try to analyze that one and you can find out the main idea easily and when you find out the main idea you find it that everything is linked with this main idea and pointing back towards this main idea or pointing towards that main idea so the main thing is everything revolves around the main idea first we discuss generally or sometimes general ideas general details are discussed later on it depends upon the style of a writer different writers have their own style so there is no hard and fast rule that this order uh, should remain same but there is one thing that your whole paragraph should revolve around this main idea now let's practically talk about how we can write it okay let's think that we are talk, writing about the religion so this is why that's why i'm talking about it because i'm talking about the specific idea now you think for a while if there are the different students in my classroom now they are from the different religions so do you think when they are writing about the religion their point of view would be same one no i don't think so if i have multiple students in my classroom they are from different religions from christianity hinduism islam jew whatever the religions are so definitely you will find out that every author when he will be given autonomy to write out so he definitely would try intend to pose or to portray his religion as the best one so the topic is same here for example but these contents will also remain the same but they are linked with the ideology and the main idea of every author what i am trying to say I mean this i main idea if someone is writing about islam so this main idea will be islam and he will prefer islam if someone is hindu he would prefer hinduism if someone is christian definitely he would write his main idea would be in favor of christianity so according to religion this main idea will vary and this all content will move 
probably this information would remain same this one because this is general but this evidence will be changed according to the this main idea now if someone is hindu definitely his evidence and his facts will endorse this idea that hinduism is the best religion if someone is jew then his facts or evidences would be different one but they are leading towards this main idea so this is what i am trying to say here and that's why here i have taken this particular topic of religion to make you understand easily because everyone is very much uh, concerned and touchy about his religion so through this example i feel that you can understand this topic is quite easily now let's see here so generally about the religion so that may be same one now the best religion as i have talked about for muslim islam is the best religion for a hindu hinduism is the best religion and uh, f for a christian uh, christianity for a jew uh, jewish religion is the best one so accordingly uh, according to this one everything will vary so now uh, the third thing would be the evidence so let's move on let's have a look at the uh, i have just roughly crafted a paragraph for you here so being a muslim what i am going to write here now let's read out this paragraph religion is a code of conduct for its followers there are several religions in the world and all are respected owing to their social and moral bindings which leads the world towards harmony now this is a generalized information among all the practicing religions islam is the best religion due to its universal value and broad mindedness now here you can see being a muslim i have written islam as the best religion and then i am writing islam provides now you can see here a logical sequence now we are talking about the religions we are respectfully talking about our religions and then we are portraying our point of view here we are embedding it and then uh, broad mindedness and then this broad mindedness has been directly linked here islam provides equal rights to all human beings so this is broad mindedness so now this is the logical sequence without any discrimination so equal rights for human being without any discrimination is going towards broad mindedness and universal values so it goes back towards this one now here again we are achieving that logical sequence uh without discrimination of caste color status and creed so islamic then islamic jurisprudence never even bring religion in the in legal matters as it insists on the justice against its followers even if he she is guilty against uh, against the any of or other uh, religion religion practitioner or the religious practitioner i have missed the point here so therefore many renowned people find islam the best and embraced islam when they neutrally researched now very concisely shortly this paragraph has been written so let's analyze this paragraph to give you uh, the real crux now these were the contents that i was talking about general details in brief religion is the code of conduct for its followers there are several religions in the world and all are respected owing to their social and moral bindings which leads the world towards harmony now this was the general detail in brief you can write your own definition here no problem then the second thing so this is in blue this is the main idea as being a muslim i have mentioned it and i told you the whole paragraph is revolving around this idea now you can see how the whole paragraph is revolving this is evidence a fact that endorses your opinion now this is the detail equal rights 
for the human beings islamic jurisprudence which is uh, very equal and balanced and then a few other references don't all the, these three things are referring back towards my opinion so this is how we can write a paragraph and we can learn how to write it precisely uh, now this paragraph may be descriptive one this may be argumentative this may be narrative so later on we will discuss about the narrative uh, genre of writing descriptive genre of writing or argumentative genre of writing so these are the three different genres of writing but basically uh, what we can say the base for writing so these are the main points around which our paragraph may revolve now let's have a look we are not going in detail about the longer composition and longer composition is essay which starts from minimum 150 words at least so in this essay now we are writing about different paragraphs there are different approaches of writing essay and the more traditional approach is called outlining so essays uh, starts from 150 words and they lead towards 3500 words 1500 words 250 words so whatever may be the expected limit and uh, now in this long composition how we may write i am here generally talking about it I mean first we do write about whatever the topic is uh, an introductory paragraph then we start writing the details which lead towards the real topic then if there are any positives of the, that particular topic the negatives and then uh, conclusion so this all makes a very good essay so this is how we can write the long composition so in the later half uh, i am going to discuss about a descriptive essay or descriptive writing and then uh, the other ones as well how we can write argumentative essay so narrative basically the narrative essay is uh, earlier on i have told you about narration narrating about something that is mostly in the past tense and in narrative essay basically we are trying to talk about any event that has happened so we need not to make any kind of outline for it whether it is narrative essay or narrative paragraph but actually we have uh, the events in the sequential order and we are just narrating them uh, the events that has happened or that going to happen that has happened already so narrative and descriptive writing if i generally ask you what is the difference between narrating something and describing something so probably your answer will be the same one but being asian or english language learners we do translate these words as same because to narrate something it also means bayan karna to describe something is also means bayan karna but these are two different genres of writing why these are different genres because there is hell of difference between these two words bayan karna and bayan karna when it comes to english so describing is about portraying a situation as it is or portraying something whereas narrating is about anything that has happened in the form of events so that is called narration or narrative writing so there may be two different kind of descriptive writing and uh, in narrative writing mostly we are using past tense in descriptive writing we are using mostly not all the time present tense and abundance of adjectives but in detail i'll discuss about it later on so far in this lecture we have discussed thoroughly about the short uh, composition which is paragraph writing uh, see you in the next lecture which would be about the descriptive writing and uh, uh, then we'd like to share our thoughts about the other writings and how to write the longer composition of the argumentative writing